good to see you here. Welcome back. Today, I'm so excited because I am going to organize my Google Drive with you and show you the new system that I am obsessed with that is really supercharging my productivity with Google. So stay tuned. Hi, it's your Google BFF, Adrian Farrow here. I am really going on a productivity kick with Google in 2024. Um, like I said in a previous video, I'm really leaning into using Google for the majority of my business and really tapping into what can it do for me. Now, if your drive is anything like my drive, um, my drives, I should say, they get messy super quick. So at the end of 2023, beginning of this year, I was really looking for a system that I could maintain easily, and I found it. Have you heard of Tiago Forte's PARA system? PARA stands for Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archive. And I'm going to organize with you my training Google Drive in the PARA system so you can see truly how easy it is. So let's get started. Okay, so I have multiple Google accounts, um, being the Google person that I am. And this one is my training account. So I only use it when I demo for YouTube or for clients or for any sort of thing that I do because I want to keep my own information private. So this one I had originally organized by the type of thing I was making. So form, slide, sheets, sites, Jamboard, etc. And then we can see here there's a lot of extra ones that have not been organized. So you probably see something like this on a regular basis. This might look very similar to yours. So the Paris system really helps make sure that it's clean and organized and easy to find everything. So first thing I am going to do is I'm going to archive everything that's in here in a date format. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to archive everything in here into one folder with today's date on it. So if you go to shift F, that's the shortcut for a new folder. So I'm going to type in archive and then today's date. So today is 1-19-24. Perfect. Okay. So one of the things I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rename this and I'm going to put a star in front of it. And that way it's going to be there at the very top of my screen or it should be. Let's see here. There we go. That works. OK, so then now I can go here and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And if I hit shift and then the last file on my screen, I will be able to highlight everything. Now I'm going to just drag those all into that archive folder. I'm going to wait a second, because sometimes it takes a second, especially when you're filming to get it in there. If it doesn't, sometimes it, yep, nope, it's just thinking. It's just thinking. There we go, here we go. So 61 items have been moved from my drive to archive 119.24. Already looks better, right? And now if I have everything in an archive folder, I can go and find it really easily. And then when I need to move things into my new structure, it's there. I'm still able to search for it, but it has already decluttered my drive significantly. So now we're going to do the other folders. So I'm going to do a shift F for a new folder, and I'm going to title this one, one project. That way it's going to show up at the top as soon as I move that archive. And then I'm going to do another folder to area number three resources and number. I'm going to, you can also right click like I just did. Sometimes I go between the two of those for archive. And I did the numbers in the front because it helps to organize them in the area that I want to. So para project area resource archive. And we're going to move that archive down there. Perfect. Now projects, and I'm going to do this to show, write it on here just to explain. So projects are anything that are time sensitive. And so they're date oriented. And for me in this one, it's going to be anytime I have a training that I'm going to do. So if I go into that folder and I'm going to do a training, say on, let's do to 
well, let's see, let's do today's date. 1, 1924, and I'm gonna say training on Google Slides. That way I know really easily that this happened on this date, this was the training associated with it, and it's a time sensitive thing. So once I'm done with this training, I don't need to see it anymore. I can actually archive that folder and then get it out of my project area so that the project folder just maintains the projects that I'm working on currently. Areas are ongoing things. So ongoing, ongoing areas of your life um, that are not time sensitive. So in my training area, I might have like general um, Google form templates. So anytime I need to see any Google forms templates, I might remove the word general because I don't need the general, but Google forms templates. So anytime I need to see a Google forms template, I could go right here. It's ongoing things. It's things I'm going to need to refer to on a regular basis, but it's not time oriented. Some other examples of folders you might have is finances. Another area might be social media. Another area might be, let's think of something like just general CEO information. So ongoing areas, things you need to refer to on a regular basis, but they're not time sensitive. So if I go back here, let's go back to projects. Some other examples might be a launch on let's say 2 15 24 launch membership launch so everything to do with that membership launch on 2 15 24 would live right here and then when i'm done i can move that into the archive another thing might be website redesign and i might not have an actual date for that but I know that it's time sensitive. It's something that's not going to be ongoing. And maybe when I realize what the date is, I can go here and I can put in March 22 or March 24, excuse me. Don't know where 22 came from. Or maybe I don't have March. Let's go back. Maybe I don't have March and I just do 2024 website redesign. Now let's go back here to the My Drive. Resources are things that you need to refer to that are like. They're reference materials. So they're not really ongoing. They're not date oriented, but it might be examples of things you find that you want to refer back to for inspiration. It might be, um, let's actually go here. Let's put some folders in here. So it could be a social media inspiration. It could be articles on productivity. These are things that you want to save, you want to see, you want to come back to, but they aren't necessarily ongoing or time oriented. And then, of course, you have archive. And so archive would be where you put anything that is before or anything that when you're done with it. So say I'm done with this training on Google Slides, I can just go to organize and then move. And then if I'm in, go to all locations, my drive. Oops, I don't want it. Well, I could move it to my drive. I didn't mean to, but let's move that one step further. We can just drag that into archive. So now I have that training on Google Slides in my archive. And the nice thing is it's out of sight. You don't have to see it in the projects that you're working on currently. You don't see it in your my drive, but it's still there. So it's still searchable. So if I wanted to search for training on Google Slides, it's coming up right here. And so now I can go directly to that folder and it's still accessible. It's out of sight though. So it makes it very, very clean. So this is what I want my drive to look like on a regular basis. Chances are you're going to start working on things. So let's go to a new, let's just do slides dot new. And you're gonna just have this untitled presentation. Maybe we even title it and we'll just do a test Google Slides. Okay, now we're in my drive. It should pop up here soon. Yeah, it's the current location is in my drive. 
that's thinking. There we go. Here's the test Google slide. So one of the things that I recommend is to set a time with yourself to organize these on a regular basis. Best practices when you're in a Google document that you go to that move icon and then you move it right away. So you could go to, you know, moving it to that training on Google Slides. So we'll just move it. That's best practice. But I know from experience, I don't always remember to do that. So say I'm in a docs here, and this is my text Google Doc. And it's here. At the end of the week, I have a routine that I'm starting called Friday Reset. And so Friday Reset is where I go through my drive, I go through my desktop, I go through everything else that I need to for organizing and really clean it up so that Monday I start fresh. So during Friday Reset, you could decide, okay, this test Google Doc needs to go into areas. And then I go into areas and I realize, oh, this needs a, okay, it's, I need a Google Doc template area. And then I can go right in there. So that is my recommendation. I will link down below a couple great videos on Para that are not mine, they're others, but they're really, really good to see the system. And there's also a wonderful book on the Para system, but I really feel like it is so clear, so easy to implement in Google Drive that it's almost a no brainer for me. I really hope that you found this video helpful. Honestly, the Para system has really transformed my organization over the last couple weeks, and it's very easy to maintain. And I even have brought that over into some of my other areas of my digital environment, including my Google Tasks, my note keeping area. I use Evernote right now. I'm looking at switching over to Google Keep. I'm really looking at that. How can I use Google the majority of the way? But everything is going to be tied either to that project, that area, the resource, or in archive. So it is really super easy for me to find because I want to save clicks, right? That's why I'm here is tips and tricks to save you clicks. Huge mega tip for you right here. If you found this useful, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe. I'm going to give you some more really concrete Google Drive tips that will really help to save you time. So stay tuned because I have some more awesome videos on the way. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.